Heartland FM. It's Alistair on Heartland FM, and uh, good to see music continuing to come out of, uh, of Tayside. Uh, just along the road uh, from us, it's Kyle Faulkner and his house to my house. Uh, Kyle, uh, welcome to Heartland FM. How's it going? How's it going, man? All good? Yeah, it's, it's going for me quite good. How's, how's kind of lockdown been, been for you? Because, I mean, as, as we kind of commemorate a year of that fatal message of shut the doors, lockdown and go home, I mean, it's not been easy for anybody. Yeah, it's, it's been tough on everyone, yeah, but... Uh, we, I was actually in America last year um, when all this stuff set, kind of started kicking off and we were over there with the family. We'd planned to live there for a bit and then this happened. So we got on the, like, we, we made the second last flight home before everything shut down. So oh, we were kind of glad to get back. And even though we were locked down, we were kind of felt safe and like just happy to get back. And having two kids and that, it was, it was, uh, they, they kept me occupied. So it was like, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. No, I so- enjoyed, enjoyed staying at home, like just, for the first time, it's normally I'm touring and touring all the time, and I don't really get to spend that much time with family like usually. So it was, I, I kind of, I, I made it, I, I made it work. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, so how's family life treating you? What's it like being a dad? It's great. Um, my my youngest daughter turned two yesterday, and my second daughter, wild. No, my first, my first daughter. Uh, she is four in two weeks. So. Um, yeah, they're at good ages. They're, they could both uh, tell me what they want now, so it's great. <laughs> so, is, is it all ice cream and jelly kind of kind of uh, parties and, and and kind of all tra- treading into the carpet? Kind of a, a, a different kind of party. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's super. To be honest. Like it's it's great to to. I think at this age is like when you start to. Really appreciate your children. You know what I mean, it's like it's. We, I think we were more excited to have the parties than them. You know what I mean, like going out and just getting sweets and just all the stuff for, for parties. It's superb. Like, and because we've had the good weather, and that it's just yeah, just a good time. And because everything's starting to kind of open up, it's just been a great time of your life. Did, did you find it kind of difficult, uh, you know, during that time? So say you spent the time with the family, which which is great. But what about the kind of creative process? Uh, I mean, were you able to still write music, do music, or 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 or, or was that kind of put as a slight sideline during this time? No, because I just kept I just kept writing. I mean, I'm always kind of writing. Anyway, I never really seen. Writing is like sitting down and going, right, I need to write today. And then like, I rack my brains. It just kind of happens. I don't, I never force it. I'll just be like taking the kids to the nursery and someone will come ahead. I'll just put in their voice note and I'll rush back to my piano and do something. And then if, like when it was locked down here, I kind of used that that time to do that. And like, I, I came up with like an entire album and then I recorded it during lockdown. So I was supposed to be going to America to do it uh, back right. over, but I couldn't get over. So the producer came to, to Margate and we recorded at Margate down south and we were there for like a month and I had like an abundance of songs. I was like, I, I think we recorded 33 songs in total and I was going, I was wanting to make like this big, huge, like to a triple album, like just loads of songs that are like, <laughs> like, like just loads of random cookie songs. And then I met Alan McGee, my, my, my manager last night and he, he, he kind of took over and was like, no, you need to, you need to whittle it down to 13 songs because nobody wants to hear a 30 song album. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Okay, because I kind of made that mistake a couple of times on records where people, record labels have been telling you like that that's too many songs on an album. And when you're a kid or when you're like 21 or 22, yeah. and you're like, oh, don't tell me what to do. Like, this is my album. I'll do what I want. So I think this time I'm just taking taking advice and listening to the people that have been through it. I mean, I've been through it as well, but I've always kind of, there's a, I've just, it's like I'm always on stepping stones and I always, Sometimes you take the wrong one, and I'm like, oh, back to the start again. So I feel like I'm on the right path at the minute. So, yeah. <laughs> so what, what happens with the other twenty? Are, are they kind of left for another project? Are, are they kind of just put to bed? I mean, will will they see, uh, you, you know, some online stuff to do with them? But what do you do with these other twenty? Uh, well, normally, normally when we do an album, like with a viewer, or if I've, I've done anything else before, we normally have like maybe five or six songs left. And they'll either go on the Japanese version of the album because the Japanese always got more for some reason. I don't know why. Like, we're, okay. we're the, same, but the Japanese always got more. Um, but we always have to give if, if, extra songs for Japanese editions. And I think, like, that'll probably be what's happening with some of these. Mm-hmm. But I, I think we're, this time, we're, we might release like a sort of a B side record or, or just continue on to. Because oh. by the time you've recorded them, by the time you go to do the next album, you don't really want to just go, right, I've got some left, let's just put them on there. Aye, aye. 
new frame of mind. You're like, right, I'm ready to go again. So let's do it. Know what I mean? So what what got you kind of up and vibed out for 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 this album? Because it's, I'm, I'm trying. To, Think of the words. Is it rejuvenated? Is it, is it a, a kind of conscious new direction? It, it just seems different, but a really good different. Uh, how, how did you approach it? I don't know. I just done exactly what I always do. I think, I think being with the view, there's a lot of egos and like everyone's wanting to do their own do their own part. And sometimes, if especially if I've written a song or if Kieran's written a song, like. When it when someone steps in, you're like, oh, I don't want it to be like that. And then, mm-hmm. but you've kind of got to you've got to let people in because you're a band. So being a solo artist, you kind of have that that way where you could you, you're the kind of the leader the leader of your own of your own brain kind of thing. You could you get to decide what comes out. But I only had one other guy that recorded it. So Frankie, the LA guy, he done the drums and played some bass and put, like some keys. And all just we, we, both of us just chipped in, but. Ultimately, he was never going, no, that's not going in. He was just kind of, what do you want to do? Which was cool. I've never really heard some of that. And because he was kind of similar, similar ages to me, he was, he's like 38 and 33. Mm, mm. He, like a producer that we normally worked with, I mean, we normally worked with like 50 year old producers when I, when I was like 20. You know, it was like, there was 30 years on that. And I was like, oh, well, yes, sir. <laughs> no, but whatever. <laughs> okay. whatever yes, Mr. Youth or Mr. 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 Owen Morris or these big, huge producers. But I think we're, uh, well, this it was just kind of like two two guys just sitting in and it was just like we we're just like playing music and just going what do I want it to sound like and just going yeah let's just play, let's play that snare sixteen times and get that <laughs> super whack on it you know what I mean it was just we we're just for the following one meets <laughs> like at the time we had all them songs but I, if I was listening to what was on the radio at the time I would have been like oh I used to sound like that so I think that's when people actually hear the album they'll be like oh there's a, there's a few different sounds that they don't really match up but I think once you hear it mm-hmm. on a whole. Like fully, you, you start to like a few times you realise that it kind of connects, and there's a few connections with lyrics and stuff as well. There's it's kind of it's kind of a theme. And there's like there's things that you realise from like the eleventh song that's connected to the second song and so forth. So there's wee Easter eggs put in there and stuff. You know what I mean, it's just it's cool. It's always good because when I was a kid listening to music, I was always like, what what does that mean? How could that how could that be? Like, and it would just pickle my head for years. And some stuff I'll do. So I thought, just like you could change a song from just putting he or like rather than she or just put uh, yes rather than no, and it becomes yeah. something completely different. Do you know what I mean? Oh, bro. Uh, the, was it written just as a, 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 a project then? You, you know, the, the, the kind of whole album, the story, you say the songs are in, in, interconnected. Uh, you said you didn't get sit down to write it start to finish, but wh- wh- where did it come from? What's the inspiration? And what did you get out of it? There was, there's never really, uh, even though the, the songs connect, there's never a theme at the time. It's like, it's like if you start writing a book and then you're like, where is this going? You don't know where it's going to go until it's finished. And then once, but and because like at that time, whatever you're thinking, you won't even notice it. But it's like your subconscious will be like, like sort of spewing out whatever's on your on your on your brain without you knowing. And sometimes you go, oh, that complete. That's why I'm saying that lyric because of that. And sometimes I've just written what's what's came off straight away, and I've and I've I've said it because I think, oh, that's that just sounds good. And then and I'm because I'm trying to get it out quick when I'm playing the piano or the guitar. And then at the end I'll go, wow, that's deep. That's really deep. Like, and I don't know where it's come from. It's like uh, sometimes I think it's like. My, my, Parents in heaven, like t- dropping we dropping we lyrics to, and and little parcels from from heaven for us. I'm like, oh, geez, I'll have that, man. <laughs> Keep <laughs> them coming. Keep them coming, mate. Uh, uh, stress ball. I've got to say, on a first listen, I, I, I was hooked. Uh, and there's not many songs that that, that can do that, you, you know. You just like, like I'm, I'm I'm hooked on it already. But that was a quick write, wasn't it? That was that was a quick write on 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 the way to work one day. Yeah. Yeah, um, so uh, the night before, uh, I was working with Justin Stanley, who's a big producer mm-hmm. there, and I told him I had three songs written, and I, I was in the taxi the next morning, I was like, I had nothing. And I was like, but he was like, he was like, you don't need to come in with anything, but it would be good if you had something. And I came in, I was like, oh no, so it was just like, and I had, I was, I was listening to Motown at the time, and I was like, bam, 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 and I had that in my head, so I wrote the Motown piano like bass thing dun, 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 dun. and I just hummed that on my phone dun, like that thing and then then I sang the the, the chorus straight away that just came like baby I could be your stress ball and I, and I wrote like B notes at really 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 in high high like high <laughs> so, like, your stress, so when you un, un, get rid of the stress high and then so that was when I went in I was like and just I ordered the chords just bang and he was like oh brilliant so he went he's a drummer so he was like 
I would have started jamming out and it was, it was great. I wasn't done. Like, and even then, the lyrics that came out were, were on the spot. So there was no, I thought there was no thought and then I just had to change a couple of lines at the end and it was, it was perfect, you know what I mean? It, it, it's about you being stressed or is it about you being the, the recipient of somebody else's stress? I'm the, I'm the recipient, yeah. Yeah. Um, just I thought it was a good sentiment, you know what I mean? Like, whatever's, whatever's going on, no matter what, you can take out on me. I'll be, I'll be that guy you could... No, I mean, <laughs> it's good. Uh, 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 video was good. Where did uh, where did you where did you record that? That just looked like a, a huge bit of fun, smashing up the cars and, <laughs> and all that. That that, that was yeah. good fun. That was a childhood dream, to be honest. Was uh, it? I've not really held a lot of baseball bats, but uh, when I have held a baseball bat, I've gone, wonder what it feels like smashing a car. And I've never really, <laughs> I, to actually do it was pretty cool. And uh, we'd, we'd done it, and there was there was a program I think it was on Channel Four years ago called Scrappies, and. They've got a big scrapyard in Bolton. It was completely legal, but it was uh, it was all we had to get tested before we went and done it and stuff, and it was all Aye. social distancing. Aye. But we we went down there and we were there from like six in the morning, and within the scrapyard, and we were like, "What car do you want to smash up?" And like, oh, any car? And they were like, "Yeah, we've got you these tools." It was like a Tarantino movie, like just like ching. It was like, "Oh, there's a sledgehammer. There's this. There was many hammers. There's everything like baseball bats, wrenches, and." Yeah, it was, it was just, they were like, just smash the cars, but uh, there was, a, actually, they went through, like, a, a number of loads of stuff, like, uh, at one point, there was a guy behind me, and he had, like, a big, like, a big, one of these things, he was trying to get metal, but I had, like, no PPR at the time, I had my t-shirt on, because I was doing some dancing, there was a lot of dance things that never got used, I was kind of like doing this mad dance, because, just because there was loads of scrappy staring at us, like, like, oh, it's like I got smoking bags and like looking at it, it's like, well, what is this? Who is this guy? What is he doing? Why are they all pointing cameras at him? I was like, oh. So I started doing this awkward dance, like when I was singing to the camera. And there was a guy behind me as well, a big, massive, like, buzz sort of thing. It was metal. It was oh. flying. I was like, oh, okay, change the scene. And then at one point, I was, I was dancing on top of a car, and there was a guy behind him with a big claw thing, and like throwing cars about it. Oh. Just missing. It was ah in my head. It was right next to my head. That was probably <laughs> okay. So uh, coming up, the the album coming out later on this year. Is, is, is it been kind of a? It's been frustrating, kind of holding on to that for so, for so long. But, but but I know it's been difficult. When do you release it? How do you promote it? I, I mean, is it you happy? It's a bit of work there now. Just ready to go to, to get out. Yeah, uh, because I recorded it last August. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was really eager to just get it done out before Christmas um, because at the time it seemed like nothing was going to open up at all or anything. Yeah. So I was like, well, I just put it out with my 33th track album. And then when I met Alan McGee, he was like, well, let's, let's cut honey and let's, let's do it right. And even before Christmas, I was like, oh, someone's got to give, come on, something like, and, and everyone's the same. But I was like, please, I just want to put it out. And he was like, no, just wait. So I think... Even when I released as well, about the first thing we released was Laura, and even that, like just the digital release, it was just great to get something out there. Mm-hmm. After, after so long, I mean, even my last record, I was like, I'm going to do an album right after it, so there's no mucking about. And it just did that. It's such a long process. You've kind of got to have an album ready to go because after the touring happens, and then you've you've got to get dates perfect for a few. It's just it's, it's not as easy as it looks. You know, for people mm. that think, oh. Where, where's the album? Like, where is it? I'll be waiting for ages. <laughs> Not even locked them, but any time. Because I always think that the Beatles used the Beatles done three albums in a year. And that, you know what I mean? It was like, yeah. it's like you look at like Elton John and Paul Weller and stuff, and I hear these two albums last year. I'm like, I want to be like that because I've got the songs, but it's just hard to get moving. You know what I mean? Uh, I suppose that, I suppose they've got to be the, the right songs because you could you could do it wrong by not putting the right songs there. And, and, and yeah. second solo albums, I've often heard that second albums are quite difficult because you got the legacy of the first one, but what do you bring out for the second one? But this certainly sounds like it's different, and there's a lot of anticipation for it. I mean, I got really good feedback from a first solo record, um, but I, I produced that on my own, and it was the first time I'd ever done that, and. I think this kind of feels like my actual first whack at a solo career. Do you know what I mean? Like the last mm. time was like just filling gaps of not being with the view. And I love the songs on it, but I just I feel like the production could have been a lot better. And this time meeting Frankie and the producer, and I just think like this this is a this is a force to be reckoned with. This record, I think it's like some of my best work. I really love it. Good. And uh, release date is is that confirmed mid June now? Yeah, it's the eleventh of June. Oh, it's good day after my birthday. Good birthday present for me. So, yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, have you got any tour dates down? I know it's difficult to lock anything down at the, at the moment and there's nothing worse than arranging and cancelling and arranging and cancelling. Have, have, have you got anything solid solid in the in, in, in the diary? 
there's a couple of things uh, that are solid, but they're, they're not being announced yet. So, right. uh, but, but there's, I was actually, there was a phone call with my agent yesterday, so there's some stuff burning away. But all this, I, I need to find out for myself. So uh, I'm going to make a phone call once I finish this and see what's okay. going on my plane. So there's, there's stuff coming. That's a, that's all you can tell us. I mean, if there wasn't stuff coming, I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be going mental, but yeah, stuff coming, yeah. Okay, so you, you got this album. We now know the release date. There's stuff coming. Uh, I, I mean, have you, have you started on new stuff yet? I know that's maybe a, a really <laughs> nasty question to ask when you're just waiting for this stuff to, 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 come, to come out. Oh, but I've got, yeah, I've got tons of stuff. Yeah, I've pretty much got an album ready to go. Right. Um, I'm not mucking about this time. I'm just, I'm, I'm ready to pounce. Like, as soon as this is two of them, like, right, done. Next one. Go for and, it. Uh, now, I'll see what goes, I'll see what goes, though, because we never know what's going on. I mean, we never know what's happening with the view or whatever. I'm just going to take it as it comes, man. I'm just happy to be alive at a minute. Will, will, will we still be, be, be gigging with, with the viewer? Is, is, is there still stuff going on with them? Or? I don't know. You don't know? Yeah, in the future. Definitely. In the future. Okay. Listen, can I wish you all the best? It's been great chatting to you. You, you seem to have a really new lease of life, a, a real positivity about you at the, at the moment. This kind of really kind of funky music. I'm going to call it funky music. I don't know if you if you want to get described as funky or, or, or not. Yeah. But, <laughs> Oh, man, that's fine. But I, I think it's really good. Enjoyed Stress Ball from the first time that I heard it. It's on our playlist and we'll enjoy playing that uh, as well. All the best with the album. All the best with the future. And uh, maybe when the kids start school, you know, you'll be dad taking the kids to school, maybe? Is it, is it, yeah, what, what's that what you'll be doing? <laughs> Listen, great chatting to you and take, take care. Stay safe. Thank you.